we now move on to our next topic which is uh, optical amplifiers uh, the first question we are asking ourselves is uh, why do we need optical amplifiers so uh, let's say this is the uh, link map uh, on the y axis we have the launched power on the x axis or rather y axis says power and the limit of the power is marked as a blue uh, dotted line there and that is uh, indicating the largest power that you can launch into the fiber. The x axis is uh, distance. So you know th that let us say we launch a certain power into the fiber, the fiber has its attenuation and because of the attenuation as a function of distance the power starts falling. Right. So the power starts dropping and the rate at which it drops is given by your 0.2 dB per kilometer. Of course, there could be additional uh, splice losses and connector losses which we are not talking about here. Uh, but considering all that, let us say the power drops to a certain value. The question is by how much can you allow the power to drop? Uh, can you allow to drop it further or what decides this minimum point? So that minimum point is what we discussed yesterday that is decided by the receiver sensitivity. You know that receiver sensitivity is the uh, power required, required to achieve a given BER and that given BER is typically 10 power minus 9. So we calculated this receiver sensitivity yesterday. I will remind you again receiver sensitivity is not the minimum power that the receiver can detect. It is the minimum power required to achieve a certain uh, BER. Uh, we calculated this in uh, connection with SNR and with uh, Q. So the lower bound for the y axis is the receiver sensitivity. You cannot allow the power to drop smaller than the receiver sensitivity and that limits the distance that you can uh, transmit over a single link without any repeater. But what if I want to transport to a longer distance? So what I can think of is I can amplify the power, bring it back to the original launched power and I can do this with an amplifier placed at the location at which my power is falling uh, down to the receiver sensitivity value and then the process can repeat. I can go on doing this, I satisfy the uh, required distance of transmission. Right? So these are uh, links that are longer haul links where the requirement is to transport uh, a very large, uh, transport over a very large distance. Now the question we want to ask is what kind of amplifier this should be? Uh, and the easiest uh, solution uh, of course is to use uh, electronic amplifier because electronic amplifier is something that everybody is very familiar with. Um, by the way the distance between two consecutive amplifier is the span what is called as fiber span between repeater. It is called repeater because the signal is uh, being received, it is being amplified uh, ideally to the same quality as that of what was transmitted and the process is repeated after certain fiber length. Uh, of course the range of operating power is decided by the largest power that you can launch into the fiber and the lower uh, limit of the operating power range is decided by the receiver sensitivity. And what decides the largest power that you can launch into the fiber that is decided by the fiber nonlinearity. and we said yesterday also we talked a bit of nonlinearity. We said we are going to discuss that later, but for now let us understand that fiber nonlinearity limits the amount of power that you can transmit through uh, at the beginning of the fiber. The range of operating power is decided by uh, nonlinear threshold and the lower limit in the range is decided by the receiver sensitivity. Now the question is uh, whether you how do you want to do this amplification? Should we use an electronic amplifier? So in earlier times before optical amplifiers were uh, first made, people were thinking of using an electronic amplifier which is 
uh, the process of electrical regeneration. So, what they do is if you have an input uh, signal, uh, you do an optical to electrical conversion. So, you get your you basically demodulate your signal and then you amplify in the electronic domain. So, uh, you know you, your transistor amplifier or op amp amplifier or uh, you know MOSFET amplifier whichever is suitable you use the traditional electronic amplification and then you convert it back from electrical to optical domain. So, you again remodulate your data. So, this is called as regeneration and this is electrical or electronic regeneration process and you get your optical signal back and uh, this was probably one of the suggestions for long distance communication. But there were some problems and the problems are you know every time you want to do this you have optical to electrical essentially you are doing a, a remodulation, you are doing a demodulation and a remodulation. Right? So, you are doing as if you are, you are carrying out all the functionalities that a, a typical a transponder should do and this will this has to happen a very frequently along the length of the fiber. Then depending on the bit rate and the modulation format the nature of the amplifier should be different because the bandwidth would change uh, if it is uh, RZ data, NRZ data depending on that the kind of amplifier that electronic amplifier should change and so on. And most importantly you, you will require a lot of energy to convert from electrical domain to optical domain first optical to electrical domain which is essentially a photo detector and then here you have a laser diode with a modulator. Right? So, it was not a very um, useful proposition as far as the energy is concerned, but thankfully uh, what has ha was possible was uh, people came up with what is called as an optical amplifier where you send in your signal input optical signal, you pump your optical amplifier this pump could be an electrical pump or it could be a uh, optical pump and your uh, output signal uh, comes out amplified without having to convert from optical to electrical domain and electrical to optical domain. right? And uh, this was probably one of the major breakthroughs as far as the fiber optic communication technology is concerned 85 sorry. So, before before we do so all optical amplifiers could be used as signal re regenerators where the loss is limitation. Uh, more importantly this became a very big uh, success because a single amplifier could be used for uh, amplifying multiple wavelength channels. We talked about wavelength division multiplexing where we said that the same optical carrier can carry uh, multiple wavelength signals each of them being modulated uh, uh, independently. So, if I could if I were to use an electronic amplifier and if I have an 80 channel system I will need 80 optical to electrical and electrical to optical conversions. Now, if I have an optical amplifier which can simultaneously amplify all the colors then there is a lot of saving as far as the energy is concerned. right? So, uh, and, and also it turns out that the optical amplifier is independent of bit rate or modulation format. So, in all for all practical purposes you can consider optical amplifier as a black box which you insert in between what are called as the spans of the fiber. The optical amplifier does the functionality of 1 hour regeneration. Now, there is this concept of 3 hour regeneration, 3 hour would mean that uh, reshaping the signal, retiming the signal and reamplification of the signal. Of course, an optical amplifier, an electronic regenerator could do a reshaping and retiming. You can clean up the signal in the electrical domain if you wish, but as far as the optical amplifier is concerned, what it can do is reamplification, which means uh, uh, you are basically amplifying the uh, power back to what you would like to so as to compensate for the loss in the system. So, uh, what are the ideal specifications that you would look for in an amplifier? what are the desired specifications. You know that it has to work for polarization multiplex data, it has to work for multiple channels, uh, it has to provide gain, uh, what else can you think of? It should not add its own noise or the noise figure of that amplifier should be minimal. 
Uh, when you amplify, there should not be crosstalk between the different channels, different wavelength division, multiplex channels and so on. So, we can list down, first of all, uh, the specifications that you would look for is unsaturated green and we will talk about what is saturated and unsaturated gain in a while, but it measures the extent of amplifiers. For now, let us say it is the gain of the amplifier. Okay? So, that is the first parameter, how much gain can this amplifier give? If I have suffered a loss of 20 dB, can this amplifier give a gain of 20 dB? Right? So, that is one, one parameter. Second is optical bandwidth, optical bandwidth in the sense that we know that we are doing communication all across the uh, C band, C band is 1530 to uh, 1560 nanometer. Uh, we also do communication in L band which is 1560 nanometer to uh, 1620 uh, nanometer. Right? So, I should ideally have an amplifier which amplifies C band, which amplifies L band and so on. But practically most of the amplifiers would either amplify a C band or it would amplify an L band. But within the C band, within this wavelength range, that is the wavelength range which has minimum attenuation. So, that is what I would use for long distance communication. The uh, bandwidth it should support, it should give me the same gain all across this bandwidth. It should not happen that certain carrier wavelengths experience more gain, certain carrier experience less wave, uh, less gain. That would uh, that would upset my link uh, budgeting. So, optical bandwidth is important. Uh, the gain should be flat, that is what we just discussed. The, uh, the amplifier should provide similar gain for all the wavelengths within the operating band. It should not add additional noise. The noise figure should be uh, as minimal as possible. Of course, uh, any amplifier generates noise, uh, but what we would try to do is to make, make sure that the noise figure by the amplifier introduced by the amplifier is as minimum as possible. It should give me a large output power which is sufficient enough for me to launch into the system, uh, into the fiber. Uh, it should not offer a large coupling loss. The efficiency of the system should be good enough. I should not be spending a lot of power to amplify the uh, uh, input signal it should be polarization independent because your incoming data could be x polarized or y polarized right so whatever i have marked in the red is a kind of saying that it should be minimal right a coupling loss should be minimal noise figure should be minimal polarization dependence should be minimal the rest of the uh, parameters that i have marked in blue should be maximized for example gain is should be large bandwidth should be large flatness should be good output power should be large, pumping efficiency should be uh, good. Right? So, these are the parameters that you want to look for whenever you are trying to choose an amplifier for your system. Now, uh, what are the options? Of course, I missed one more parameter which is crosstalk. Uh, when you are trying to amplify multiple uh, uh, carrier wavelengths, you should not have any mixing or crosstalk between the data from one wavelength to the other. Essentially, it says that the amplifier should be operated in the linear regime. The amplifier should not be uh, non-linear as far as the WDM channels are concerned. Right? So, if I have uh, uh, input as uh, P lambda 1 uh, plus P input lambda 2 plus etcetera, I have P lambda n as my input to my amplifier, my output should be gain times P lambda 1 in plus P lambda 1 uh, lambda 2 in plus etcetera P lambda n in. I should not get anything additional other than this. Each of the uh, WDM channels should get amplified by the same factor g is what we are trying to say. So, this is in general requirements for an optical amplifier or these are the specifications that we have to keep in mind when we are trying to choose an amplifier. But uh, as far as amplifier itself is concerned, there are three possibilities to build the amplifier. All the three are available commercially. You could use erbium doped fiber amplifiers, which is an optically pumped system. You could use semiconductor optical amplifiers, which is an electrically pumped system. Or you could use Raman amplifiers, which is again an optically pumped system. Now, semiconductor opti optical amplifiers is something that is close to what you have learned earlier. We talked a lot in the beginning of the course about semiconductor lasers 
where you had a gain medium and you had mirrors right. So, semiconductor optical amplifier is nothing but uh, the semiconductor gain medium without the mirrors. Okay. So, all the theory that we learnt for a uh, amplifier semiconductor gain medium will work for a semiconductor op optical amplifier. Uh, erbium dope fi fiber amplifier is uh, of a similar uh, structure except that in semiconductor optical amplifier the gain medium is the is a semiconductor material where you talk about the valence band and conduction band and inversion created because of electrical pumping. So, essentially it is a forward biased p n junction and you increase the carrier density in the junction region by pumping more current externally and these electrons and holes recombine giving you photon and so on. Whereas, in an erbium doped fiber amplifier the gain medium is a doped fiber, a silica optical fiber which is a silica fiber which is doped with the rare earth ion erbium. So, uh, in an erbium doped fiber amplifier the gain medium is a, a silica fiber, but that is doped with the rare earth ion erbium. Now, why erbium? Erbium uh, has its emission spectra, it has the electronic states that correspond to the 1550 or uh, C band of communication. We will we'll talk further about this. But that is the difference between a semiconductor optical amplifier and an erbium dope fiber amplifier. Now, the third option we have is a Raman amplifier, where uh, the Raman effect is used for amplification. Now, we will not go into the details of semiconductor op optical amplifier and Raman amplifier simply because what is most commonly used and which satisfies all the specification requirements that we had earlier. Uh, is uh, satisfied mostly by the erbium dope fiber amplifier. There are special conditions where uh, a Raman amplifier or an SOA, this is called an SOA uh, is uh, used, but those are only very, very specialized conditions. Most of the optical communication systems use erbium dope fiber amplifiers. So, we will be talking about uh, erbium dope fiber amplifiers called as EDFA or EDFA. So, EDFAS are the most common optical amplifiers and we will be talking more about EDFAS now. 